Well, here we are. Corporal's Corner midweek video number 20. The One Rope Bridge, otherwise known as the Commando Bridge. Let's get to it. So a long time ago in a galaxy, seven or eight years ago, when I was up in Washington, um, I went ahead and did a One Rope Bridge, otherwise known as the Commando Bridge. I followed that up with a Two Rope Bridge. Now, most people have no idea I even did that. It's completely buried by YouTube. You have to actually type in Corporal's Corner Commando Bridge. And then, even though you type that in, I looked at it, it was like the 10th one down. So, um, I want to revisit that and get that good information out there. Um, it's very simple. I'm going to utilize the same bushcraft knots that we use all the time. When I did it seven or eight years ago, I utilized military knots. So, I'm going to go ahead and change it up a little bit. That way you can see how these knots can transfer from just learning the simple, you know, bushcrafty, putting up a tarp, and I'm going to join two ropes together um, to make my cordage longer for my tarp. I can now use that same mindset or even a midline loop and apply that to a larger purpose. So let's get to it. Today we're going to deal with 3 8 diameter, 100 foot in length, static line rope. This is, yes, available on my Amazon affiliate page. That link is inside my description box. 100 feet, you see how big that is. That's nothing. Here's the reality. People think they're going to go out there and start rigging up stuff. They got to carry 3, 4, 500 foot of rope and run around. You're not special forces. This is not Vietnam. And most likely you will not be scaling cliffs and doing things like that. Carrying excess items that are bulky and that weigh a lot could cause problems for you however it's always fun to go out and practice this kind of thing that's why i want to change the knots and work them more geared towards bush craftiness because we practice those every single day so if you already know how to do them setting up a one rope bridge will be a joke okay along with that i have three there's one extra one in my pocket you have carabiners These are not Home Depot carabiners. These are actually rock climbing carabiners that are rated for thousands of pounds. So um, I'll show you a close up on these and then the rope as well. But once again, that's 3 8 diameter, 100 foot long static line rope. This is why I like this rope. Look how flexible that is. You can manipulate it, twist it, do whatever you want. And it's very forgiving. Now, at one end here, I'm gonna tie a simple bowen and then pass my carabiner through it. Eight years ago when I did this video, we tied figure eights. Why? Because the military shows figure eights. Now here's my opinion on this. Both of them are end of the line loops, meaning you can tie it at the end of a line. They're not going to close on itself when tension's applied. And both of them are used for rescue. So one person, two people, three, four, or five crossing a gorge or a river, and you tie a bowling around a tree, you'll be in business. And boom, there it is. From here, taking my bowline and my carabiner, we're gonna simply go around the tree, right around chest to head height, and then simply lock it off. Here's our huge jump rope. Now let's talk reality. Let's imagine, if you will, imagination. Between that tree and this tree, there's a large river or a creek. Or how about this, a ravine that goes down 25 feet all the way across and then back up. Here's the reality of doing a one rope bridge. You need two people. One person has to eat it, go down that ravine all the way over and up to tie off or swim that river. So this works perfect in a large setting of people, five, six, seven, ten 10 people. Maybe somebody's injured. Maybe you have to transport gear from one side to the other. 
However, one person will always eat it. Make that swim or do that climb. Now, we're locked off over there. Let's focus on this tree right here. Next, we're gonna tie an alpine butterfly loop. You've seen me do this before on my other videos, especially the one where we went ahead and did the Arnold predator trap in the woods. All I'm gonna do is a different variation of it. Got my left hand. I'm gonna give myself some slack. I'm gonna go around two times. Now taking this middle rope right here, I'm gonna go underneath my first one. Now take the new first one, and I'm gonna go over the other two, then underneath, and then we're gonna dress it up. We have our second carabiner. Gonna pop it through there. And we're in business. There's our midline loop and our carabiner. Think of this next portion as a large ridge line for a shelter. We're gonna go around a tree and then back through our carabiner and create a pulley system. The object now is to move this alpine butterfly loop as close as I can to this tree. Doing so is going to tighten this rope up. And I want the thing tight rope tight. So right there you can see the clear advantage of having three, four, or five people on this rope yanking it in unison, a tug of war, to tighten this bad boy up. But I'm a one man show so let's get her done. Now taking this excess, I want to wrap around the tree three times to get that tension off my hands and distribute it around that tree. And that should be good enough. The trick from right here is I want to take this rope, go around one more time, and then lock it off right here. Two ways to traverse this bridge, under the rope and on top of the rope. Under the rope, it's hand over hand, hanging off the rope, your legs in an X over top of the rope, and you basically slide along. Now, on top of the rope, it gets a lot trickier. Um, imagine the rope going down the center where your chest is, across your stomach and growing one leg bent back on the rope, another leg dangling straight down like a cattail, keeping that balance as you hand over hand crawl along the top. Um, both have dangers, both have positives and negatives. <sighs> Enough talking. Let's get her done. Here's my prediction. It's nowhere as tight as it should be. Why? Because I'm a one-man show. You need three people for this. One to go swim across or climb across and stay there and man the ropes and the other two at a minimum to tighten that bad boy. Again, I'm a one man show, so most likely you're gonna get this Boeing action going on, but we'll get through it. So the trick is, you get it directly in between your chest, you have your leg down here, as a counterweight and your other leg up on top of the rope and you can sway back and forth to balance yourself as you creep along.
Still got it. Now that is the preferred method to be on top of the rope. And like I already said, there's too much slack in that rope. But it is what it is. Now I'm going to show you the second method underneath the rope. And to be really honest, I hate this because if there's any water underneath, most of the time your back's going into it. It's not the years, it's the mileage. Ugh. So there you go. Under the rope and above the rope. So preferred method is above. That way, say you're gonna skirt the top of that water, you're on top of that rope versus being underneath and getting drenched. Um, there's a time and place for everything and I do not recommend doing this unless you have three to five people with you. For safety reasons and to also get that rope as tight as possible. We're talking tight rope tight. Um, all in all, one person, it's good enough and it worked, but you get the idea. The same minimalistic knots, flashes, and hitches that I teach and I've taught for years can even transfer into something like this. And there you have your one rope bridge or commando bridge. I'm going to go ahead and end with this, and it's controversial. Most people don't want to hear it because reality sets in, and that's physical fitness. Um, it's easy to talk down to somebody or about somebody or about somebody's channel and what they should or shouldn't be doing when you're sitting on your porch or in your shed or in your basement. Um, I put myself out there every single week. Those that follow me on Instagram, you see me doing workouts in my garage every single day. I am active, and I work 12 to 14 hours a day on top of that then come out here twice a week and film videos. And real soon here, we're filming the online classroom. So I go out and I do things every single day. I practice what I preach. Those that don't, and you choose to follow them, good luck. Um, that's all I'm gonna say on that, but physical fitness is a big part of this. Any scenario you pick, grid down, something happens, aliens land, whatever. If you're looking like 50 pounds of crap shoveled into a 10 pound sack, you're probably gonna do yourself in and put yourself six foot under. Get healthy, get out there, get active, do something for those around you, for your loved ones, and ultimately for yourself. On that note, all the gear in my videos can be found in two places. One, my Amazon influencer page, and two, my Etsy page. Both links are found inside my description box. Now please do me that favor, hit that like and subscribe button, then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. And as always, thank you for your comments, views, and support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the field, have some fun. I'm gonna catch you next time. Still got it.